dear friends, I'm Carol Correa, and we are here on Kardec Radio, 24 hours, nourishing our souls for our God at home moment. The God at home moment is the time when we consciously unlock the door of our homes to invite our beloved God, Mother, and Father, Universal Mother and Father, to commune with us. God is constantly communing with us because we are immersed in God's love, but we are incarnated at the human level to learn to consciously nourish this connection. This is why Kardec Radio is here, dear friends, and this is why Kardec Radio promotes the God at home moment with you once a week because it is our opportunity to join forces to consciously feel the love of God nourishing our souls. And yes, how can we go about maintaining this connection with God? We can, first of all, pray. The law of worship is a universal law, is an opportunity that we have to log in into God's beautiful network by using the long-standing password of prayer and God's network Wi-Fi is always available. Then we read an educational message to nourish our souls. We comment on it out loud so we can share the treasures of God's love with incarnate and discarnate spirits alike who are around us. Then we say a closing prayer to thank God for the many treasures we have received. So this is what we shall do tonight dear friends and tonight is a most special moment for us because we will continue studying the law of equality on the third part of the spirit's book most specifically we are going to focus our attention on questions 804 and 805 this is a very timely discussion dear friends and learning moment as we undergo the current circumstances that we are experiencing in the united states and everywhere in the world it will be wonderful for us to learn more about god's immortal love through our study of the law of equality let me uh stop for a moment to say hello to the friends that i see before we get started hello dear paloma we just nourished our souls with you through the daily prayer effort thank you dear friend for sustaining jesus christ's current of light and love thank you Thank you, Nora Brazil, for joining us. Big hug, dear friend. It's always wonderful to have you here. It's wonderful that we can be in this beautiful platform, thinking the good, visualizing the good, speaking the good, hearing the good, spreading the good, and molding the good with the force of the spirit of our thoughts and feelings joined together for a single purpose to be of service as we nourish one another this is the beauty of god's love the more we receive god's love as we are doing right now the more we are ready to offer it to those in greater need so this can be a beautiful moment of service as well allow me to enter facebook briefly here to see if i can see other friends just to say hello because it is part of our experience on earth to 
feel as though we are part of the same circle of light and love. Yes, law of society, right, dear friends? Okay, so if I don't see you, please forgive us. Feel embraced, feel welcomed, feel part of this beautiful circle of light as a beautiful child of God. Now we are going to say our opening prayer. Let us join thoughts and feelings, words together so that the dear mentors of Kardec Radio can potentialize the beautiful thoughts and feelings we are sending forth on behalf of those who are in greater need. Hello, Franklin. Welcome, dear friend. Nice to see you once again. Let us then close our eyes and open our hearts, feeling the beautiful sunlight that sustains our entire globe. We visualize at this moment our beloved Master Jesus, whose feelings are so pure and beautiful that they shine like the sun. We visualize his loving heart emanating golden rays of love and reaching each and every one of our hearts in both realms of life. Enveloped in the circle of light, we envision our homes being renewed by this golden light of Master Jesus' love. We also visualize this golden light spreading throughout our neighborhoods, our cities, our states, our countries, and the entire globe. We visualize a shower of this beautiful golden light reaching every hospital in every nation, every orphanage, every shelter, every worship, every temple of light, every heart who is in despair, every heart that is overwhelmed by sadness. Every heart that is overwhelmed by revolt and rebelliousness. Every heart who is crying for protection. May all of these hearts be enveloped in this beautiful, healing, golden, loving light. And may they feel one with the father and mother creator of the universe, we pray, so that they hear Master Jesus' voice kindly telling them, you are light, you are love, you are peace, and you are joy of living, beautiful child of God. You are beloved. And feeling the protection of this beautiful, all-enveloping circle of golden light from Master Jesus' heart. We feel more united and more protected than ever. And we ask for permission to begin our studies tonight, praying also that our crumbs of love, however small, be multiplied throughout the study session on behalf of those who are spiritually malnourished, spiritually thirsty, spiritually isolated, spiritually under the illusion that they are disconnected from God. May the crumbs of our humble vibrations soothe their hearts in the name of God's infinite love. So be it. It feels good 
to feel the good inside of us. And it feels even better to know that we can co-create the good through a simple moment of prayer. So if we don't know at times how to be useful, dear friends, what we just did is a beautiful act of service, even more so when we are together in a beautiful platform like Kardec Radio's platform. Now let us go to the Spirit's book, question 804, to instruct ourselves all the more. By the way, I'm using my phone to read the Spirit's book for free. It is fully available in PDF form, so we can carry the universal laws that sustain us all in our phones with us. So tonight we are going to start reading a section of the Spirit's book, which Kardec entitles Inequalities of Aptitudes. And question 804 is as follows. Why has God not given the same aptitudes to all humankind? Because our society is so still ingrained in at times ancient habits where we still value appearances and titles so much. We still see, uh, we still interpret God through our own very eyes, our eyes of prejudice and bias. But is God in fact prejudiced and biased or is that coming from our temporary, still evolving, ever progressing human condition? Let us not hear from ourselves. Let us hear from the beautiful spirit mentors from on high. They certainly have immortal, eternal wisdom to share with us. So they are the professors in this beautiful intercontinental classroom. So let us note what they bring about for us all to learn. The spirit mentors on high say, all spirits have been created equal by God, but some of them have lived more and others less and have consequently acquired more or less development in their past existences. The difference between them lies in their various degrees of experience and in the training of their will, which constitutes their freedom and in virtue of which some improve themselves more rapidly. So before we continue, let us pause for reflection because right there and then, the beloved spirit mentors from on high already give us a lot to consider. So they affirm to us that all of us are created equal. So phew, we can hold on to this certainty. The beauty of turning on God's television, which is what we are doing right now, and reading God's news broadcast, which is what we are doing right now through the Spirit's book, the beauty of reading this kind of news broadcast is that this kind of news broadcast is the news that we can really truly trust because it has not changed and it shall not change. How do you know, Carol? Because God is eternal and immutable. So while human laws and human understandings of life and of our societal relationships shall evolve all the more, God's universal laws have not changed and shall not change. So the beauty of 
spiritism, dear friends, is that it is the light of the sermon. It offers us the gift of many certainties that we can hold on to. So this is an immortal treasure for us. Let us take it, hold on to it, and place it in our hearts. What is the first pearl of wisdom? the first treasure that we can place into our hearts, the fact that God has created all of us equally. Therapeutic question for all of us, knowing that this is a fact that is immutable. Do we believe that God loves Jesus more than he loves us? And can we already picture ourselves at Jesus' level? You, you may be wondering, but Carol, dear Carol, you are putting the bar too high for us. Well, dear friends, according to God's plan, the bar is not high at all. How do I know? Because Jesus is our guide and model. And if we were created equal, that means that we are destined to get to his level. And that also means that prior to being a pure spirit as Jesus is and will continue to be, he went through the same evolutionary pathway that we have undergone and will continue to undergo because God does not privilege Jesus over us. For God, we and Jesus have the same importance because we are created equally, say the spirits on high. But then you may be wondering, Carol, how can we explain then the difference, the huge apparently huge gap that there is between ourselves and Master Jesus, or even ourselves and a spirit like Chico Xavier, who dedicated his life 24 seven towards uh, serving others. How can, how can we explain such a gap? Such a gap, dear friends, is logical. We learn in the answer here for question 804. How, how come we say it's logical? Because it depends on how the experiences and knowledge that we acquire throughout our many reincarnations. Let us give uh, ourselves uh, an even more tangible example. If we go back to the book 2000 years ago, psychographed by Chico Xavier, dictated by the spirit mentor Emmanuel, we see that Emmanuel in that life was a very prominent Roman senator named Publio Lentulus and that his wife was very loving and dedicated. Her name was Livia. Because of a newness in the family with one of their children, Publio Lentulus has the opportunity to encounter Master Jesus one-on-one. -on -one. Master Jesus meets Publio Lentulus, heals their daughter, Flavia, and tells Publio Lentulus that that was an opportunity for him to turn his life around and become the first Christian Roman senator of primitive Christianism. That was his reincarnatory plan for him to be the first prominent Christian politician 2000 years ago. That was supposed to be the table turner for him, he was supposed to develop a lot of different Christian-like aptitudes. What did Publio Lentulus choose 2,000 years ago? He chose a completely different pathway. He did not surrender to Christ's proposal. He was not ready to acquire the Christ-like 
aptitudes that were proposed directly by Master Jesus to him. On the other hand, his wife Livia really took Master Jesus' healing of their daughter Flavia to heart, and she became a Christian despite the resistance of the society at the time. So what happened, dear friends, without spoiling this beautiful story, real life account that I highly recommend you read, uh, I would like to tell you the following. Though they were married, Publio Lentulus and Livia, because of the choices they made in that lifetime, when Livia discarnated, though her life was completely anonymous, to the public, and though she didn't do anything to call others' attention, but she surrendered her heart to the Christ, what happened to her when she discarnated? She ascended directly to the Christ spheres, and she's working with the Christ to this date, 2,000 years later, and she never, ever, ever had to reincarnate again on earth. Why? Because she already decided on that life through her free will, the power of her own will to acquire the immortal treasures of the Christ consciousness. 2,000 years ago, she made the decision and because of that decision, she accelerated the pathway of her evolution. And what happened to, em to Emmanuel Publilentulus at that time? He made the opposite choice. So he did not ascend to the Christ spheres after he discarnated. Instead, he reincarnated 50 years later as the slave, as a slave named Nestorio. Then later, he reincarnates yet again and is killed on behalf of Christianity. Later, he continues in another reincarnation to embrace the Christ proposal. And currently, Emmanuel is reincarnated on the earth. According to Chico Xavier, he reincarnated in the year 2000, believe it or not. So do we see the differences and aptitudes, the inequality in aptitudes when we compared, compare Livia and Publio Lentulus? Now the question is, where is this inequality coming from? From God? No. From the way in which both Livia and Publio Lentulus decided to cooperate with God. One, Livia, surrendered fully. The other, Publio Lentulus, surrendered only to his ego, to his self-interests, to his immediate gratification and recognition. So here's a thermometer for us, dear friends. Where are we in our own acquisition of Christ-like aptitudes? Are we ready to renounce our ego in order to acquire Christ-like qualities like Livia has done? Or do we still feel the necessity to be recognized, to be applauded by the world, to be seen as someone who is superior to others, as Publio Lentulus had done because of title, because of position, because of socioeconomic status, because of having been born in family X, Y, or Z? Where are we in order to open our hearts to become peacemakers and to promote equality first by looking at one another all across the board as children of God? We need to divest 
ourselves from the millennial habits that we all have to be recognized as superior to others. And how, how do we do that? It depends on how we act in our own sphere of action. If we cannot handle authority, dear friends, even when we act as a mother or father, when we say to a child, you must do this because I told you so, no discussion then we are abusing our authority. We may be thinking we are superior to that child. Or if we are the boss at a company and we say either it's my way or the highway, we, are all, we may also be abusing authority. Or we automatically label someone as smart or not, depending on their appearance, as capable or not, depending on whether they agree with our way of being or not, whether they are in our intimate club or not. If we are still using these parameters, as our own way of interacting with one another, we are being materialistic, just like Publio Lentulus was 2,000 years ago. He said to the Christ, literally, and you can read these words directly in the book. If you speak Portuguese, you can even listen to the narrative. It's available on YouTube, and it's a beautiful rendition. You can hear or read Jesus' words inviting Emmanuel Publio Lentulus to join in his team and Publio Lentulus saying, who are you to speak like this to a senator of the great republic? This is how Publio Lentulus address Jesus, addresses Jesus Christ. So if we still have this feeling inside of us, who are you or who do you think you are or don't you know who I am? Even if we act like this in our own family circle, that means that we still need to divest ourselves from materialism. And it is this very characteristics that prevent us from acquiring the Christ qualities that delay our progress. So if our progress is delayed, if there are inequities, as we see clearly in the couple, central couple in 2000 years ago, if we notice these inequities, it's not because God wishes it so as a punishment for us, but it is because we, are still in the process of opening our hearts to equality, to looking at one another as children of God, as gifts from God, as treasures from God, as flowers from God that are destined to blossom beautifully in ways that we can't even imagine. And yes, Cristina Antunes, it is fantastic. The Christ's proposal is life-changing, right, Monica? You're right, humility is the way to go. And yes, Lucia, praying is a beautiful way to nourish our souls and to learn Humility as we surrender to this much greater loving force than we are. Right, dear friend? Yes? So, beautiful proposal. And if we feel as though we still have edges to polish, to bring this feeling of equality to the temple of our heart, Great, because that's why 
we are reincarnated on the earth. So that's why we also study, so we can polish these rougher edges and shine like a divine diamond. So we can put our hands in our hearts right now and say, I believe in everyone's divine nature. I believe in everyone's divine nature. I believe and I respect everyone's divine nature. I believe and I respect everyone's divine nature. And we can put these words into practice by visualizing we talking to one another with our master in the middle. Let us invite our master to be part of our conversations. Let us invite our master to be part of our meals. Let us invite our master to be part of the inner dialogues that we have in our own minds. Let us invite our master to be part of our uh, partnerships with our spouses. Let us invite our master to help us be loving, more loving, even more loving parents. Let us invite our master to help us inspire this feeling of inclusiveness in our children as well, because this is a plan that is much more perfect than we can imagine. It's a plan that comes from God, and we can see this plan is in action, even in nature. Right now in the United States of America, it is summer, the end of spring, beginning of summer, and we see so many beautiful flowers blooming, and we don't see any flowers saying, oh, I'm not going to bloom next to that flower because I need to have my own five minutes of fame. We don't see any flower saying this. The flower is confident in its divine nature. It blooms. It offers its perfume, knowing that it will be fully integrated in God's masterpiece, in God's harmonious vision of all the flowers coming together to form a beautiful living painting of love. Let us learn to look at one another as beautiful living paintings of love where each one of us play one part that makes the whole harmonious and beautiful. So let us invite the Christ and ultimately, of course, God to be part of our relationships and ask God to show us in our relationships how we can be more harmonious to collaborate with the balancing of the whole. In that way, we will be promoting equality from within, we will be vibrating equality. Let us continue then our learning process because of course we want to learn more. We don't want to stop, right dear friends? Let me go back to the question here and summarize it for us all the more. One moment. Thank you for your patience. My phone is going back to the right question, dear friends. One moment. Getting there.
Yes. So then that's what the spearmenters were like us to meditate upon, that we have freedom to cultivate virtues more rapidly depending on the choices that we make and how do we know that we are ascending faster the experimenters say if we can share information and actions that are useful and that contribute to the general good so great the experimenters gave us uh, two rules of thumb one, if we want to progress faster, let us do useful work. Two, if we want to progress even faster, let us do useful work that is good for the general good. That is good for the general good. Great. So now we know which direction to go. And you may say, but Carol, how can we go about doing such things in the current circumstance of the pandemic? We can most certainly pray within our the realms of our thoughts. We can travel miles and miles away on both realms. We can visualize peace. We can be useful by using words wisely. How about that, dear friends? When we talk on the phone, when we send an email, when we send a text message, we can be useful by asking, is this necessary for me to say? Is this true? Is this kind? Is this useful? Let us learn to speak for the good and think for the good. And with the computers now, we can be faster than the speed of light and share the good within all four corners of the world. So all of us can be super useful, dear friends. And you're right, Christina, Kardec Radio is an amazing tool and we can all keep on sharing it. This is how we co-create with God by sharing love and wisdom. Kardec Radio allows for us to share both love and wisdom, dear friends. All in one. Beautiful, right, Christina? Hello, Luke Allen. Welcome, dear friend. Let us read our last question of tonight. Question 805. Kardec asks, does a spirit in passing from a higher world to a lower world preserve in their integrity the faculties she had previously acquired? Mm, excellent question. Yes, the experimenters say. We have already told you that a spirit who has progressed cannot again fall back. She may choose in her spirit state, our corporeal envelop, envelope, more benumbing or position more precarious than those she quits. But all this is so, so combined as to teach her some new lesson and thus to aid her future progress. So what a beautiful message of hope dear friends we now learn that we never regress isn't it beautiful that means that god is constantly enveloping i mean investing on our spiritual development how comforting is this for us to know that we never regress if in one lifetime we occupy x position and in another lifetime we occupy y position and we keep going back and forth into different positions be it social economic be of be it of ethnicity, be it of nationality. These changes have no purpose rather than teaching us 
new skills. So therapeutic question for us. What are some of the characteristics that God has granted us in this current reincarnation? For instance, are we reincarnated in the body of a woman? Or are we reincarnated in the body of a man? If we are reincarnated in the body of a woman, what qualities are we to learn? We perhaps are reincarnated in the body of a woman to acquire certain eternal qualities that are more attuned with the feminine. If we are reincarnated in the body of a man, what are some of the qualities associated more closely with the masculine that we are to acquire? Is it the term determination? If we are in the body of a woman, is it compassion? Is it empathy? Of course, we can acquire these qualities across the board because we all have both the feminine and the masculine in us as spirits. We are to develop both sides of us. But if God put us in this current circumstance, what are we to learn? If we were born in country X and immigrated to country Y, why did God have this beautiful plan for us? What are some of the qualities that we learned in country X? And what are some of the qualities that we learn in country Y? Or if we move from city A to city B, what are we to learn from city A and city B? God has a plan. Let us open the gospel according to spiritism. See the Christ virtues such as patience, obedience, resignation, faith, etc. And look to see what, which ones of these virtues may be in our curriculum for this lifetime. Currently, the entire world is facing very challenging circumstances. Let us ask ourselves, both individually and collectively, what virtues are we to learn from the situations? Because as we just learned in question 805, God only grants us opportunities that can actually help us progress. So one such quality that we may, in, may be in need of cultivating is serenity. It may be faith in God. So every day we can visualize flowers of faith and hope growing within the garden of our hearts. And you may be saying, but Carol, you talk about flowers a lot. Yes, because we are nature as well. We are living creatures of God. And if we visualize beautiful, soothing realities for ourselves, we may be more at peace. And if we are more at peace, then our words, gestures, vibrations, thoughts can be a little drop of serenity for somebody else. So let us be beautiful friends, sowers of peace sowers of serenity, sowers of hope, because the majority of people in the world still don't know that God is all loving, that God invests upon us, that life goes on. They do not hold the certainties that we do. So we are being called upon by God to show them, everyone in our uh, circle of action, that they are beloved by God. We don't need to preach anything but our words, our vibrations, our actions will leave the perfume of peace, the perfume of hope, 
and a perfume of faith. We can visualize ourselves giving flowers of hope and faith to everyone that may be in greater need. This is a beautiful service that we can provide. How do I know? Because we are co-creators with God and God is counting on each and every one of us in the book Paul and Stephen by the spirit mentor Emmanuel. Emmanuel explains that each of us are individually called by Christ the governor of our planet to join forces with him tonight you are receiving a beautiful invitation personalized to you Thelma Santos Christina Antunes Luke Allen Monica Nora Brazil everyone those listening to us on the app on YouTube prepare the mailbox of your heart get the key to the mailbox of your heart because right now inside of your heart there is a letter personally written to jesus i mean from jesus and by jesus asking each and every one of us would you like to be my disciple would you like to be a peacemaker with me? Let us literally take this invitation to heart and allow it to permeate every single fiber of our souls so we can become living messages of hope, emanating the perfume of God's love everywhere we go. Right, Monica? Yes. Let us now then, dear friends, feeling blessed by this beautiful invitation in the mailbox of our hearts here. Let us pray once again because we have much to be thankful for right nor brazil right franklin right paloma the invitation is there for us let us pray beloved mother father god we thank you so much for giving us offering us so much love we ask for your forgiveness for we sometimes are blind to your love. We sometimes are like children throwing tantrums, asking for what we want rather than what we need. And we are unable at times to see how much you invest in us. We pray, oh, Mother, Father, God, so you transform the soils of our hearts in a beautiful garden of hope and peace. We pray so that we not only know the Christ conscious virtues, but that we can acquire them little by little. We can feel them little by little. We can be enveloped in them little by little. We can allow them to transform us little by little. And just like the butterflies, we can come out of the cocoon of selfishness and fly towards altruism, fly towards hope fly towards faith, fly towards altruistic love and fraternal understanding, fly higher and higher because now we know that you invest upon us time and again. We would like to thank you, dear Mother, Father God, for never giving up on us, 
for sending us so many beautiful messengers of hope, most especially our Lord and Master, Jesus Christ. We pray so that his sweet and loving voice renews our spirit right at this time as he repeats, I count on you, I believe in you, and I ask you to follow me. As we gaze into Master Jesus' loving and beautiful, serene eyes, we can visualize the entire world covered in a blanket of compassion, a blanket of fraternity, a blanket of unity, a blanket of equality. And we pledge, Master Jesus, to plant seeds of equality when inside of our own hearts. We pray so that you help us let go of the illusions of materialism so we can act as in accordance with our true nature, that of eternal spirit. We pray so that you grant us the courage to feel the good, to speak the good, to see the good in everything and in everyone, to think the good and to mold the good inspired by you in every action we take, in every step we take, in every decision we make. And at this time, Master Jesus, Mother and Father God, we pray so that you take the beautiful living water of faith to spirits who feel desperate. We pray so that you take the bread of compassion and understanding to those that are engaging in rebelliousness and revolt. We pray so that you take flowers of hope to all of those in both realms overcome by sadness. And we pray so that once and for all, all of us here are able to unwaveringly accept your loving invitation and allow it to transform our lives in the way in which we see others. Please, Master Jesus, live in our hearts, inspire us in every moment of every day. And with your permission and in much gratitude to God, and this beautiful lifetime and the gift of the present moment, we ask for permission to end our studies tonight. And so be it. Thank you, dear friends. What a blessing it is to feel God's love, right? It feels so good to think the good and to feel the good. Thank you, friends, for the beautiful gift of your company. Hi, Donna. It's so nice to see you, Donna Pennison. Thank you, Nora Brazil. I really appreciate your presence as beautiful children of God. Remember, you are children of God. You are children of God. You reincarnated to learn to do good. And let us then keep doing the good always. And remember, Kardec Radio is here 24-7, always nourishing our souls.
Many blessings to your friends today and always.